This is a video about this graph and why I absolutely hate it. If you've seen this before, this is a graph comparing the investment return of buying shares in a company versus buying call options. What it tries to do is compare the two investment strategies and it shows you two main things. First, that if you buy call options, you limit how much you could lose. And second, to make the same amount of money from buying a call option, a stock price has to go up more than if you just bought the stock itself. If you're confused at this point, don't worry about it. I'll explain all of this in just a moment. I suppose this chart is fine for what it is, and you see it in finance textbooks and other YouTube videos on this topic all the time. But this chart is a lie. It's making an absolutely absurd comparison that no one in their right minds would ever make in reality. Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and in this video, we're going to learn a lot. I'm going to give you a quick introduction to stock options with a focus on what are known as calls, and I'm going to explain how you should actually compare them to stocks. To do that, we're first going to learn what stocks and call options are, and then explain this terrible graph in detail. And finally, if you stick around to the end, I'll show you what this graph should actually compare when talking about stocks versus options. There's a lot to cover, so let's jump in. First, what's a stock? We don't need to go into a ton of detail here, but what you need to know is that if you buy a stock, its value can go up or down, depending on what the broader investment market thinks about the value of that stock. Let's say you buy a single share of Datacorp stock at $10. If the price of that stock goes up to $50, you'll make 40 bucks. And if it goes down to five, well, you'll lose five. And the more shares you buy, the more you stand to earn or lose. If you buy 100 shares of Datacorp stock at $10 each, that'll cost you a thousand bucks. And now, every point the stock moves up or down, you'll make or lose $100. Figuring out your profit and loss with stocks is really just that simple. For every share you own, if the stock price changes by some amount, just multiply that amount by the number of shares you own, and you know how much you've made or lost. Things get a bit trickier with stock options. There are five things we need to know about options to make the failings of this chart clear. First, we're only going to talk about call options in this video, leaving put options for another time. Second, a call option is basically a contract between two people where one person agrees to sell another person a bunch of shares of a company at a pre-agreed price until some specific future date. For example, I might make a contract with someone else to buy 100 shares from them of Datacorp stock at $10 per share, something called the strike price. But critically, I can only do that for, say, the next 30 days. As in any time in the next 30 days, I can force the other person to sell me exactly 100 shares of Datacorp stock for $10 per share. But after 30 days, the contract is torn up and our relationship ends. Third. No one is going to give me that contract for nothing. So for the right to buy 100 shares of Datacorp at $10 for the next 30 days, I might have to pay the other person something upfront like $200. Fourth, the price of a call option comes from two places, the strike price of the option relative to the underlying value of the stock and how much time is left in the contract. Let's take those one at a time. For a call option, the lower the strike price relative to the price of the underlying stock, the more valuable is the contract. For example, if the contract is to buy Datacorp at $5 per share, but Datacorp stock is currently trading at $10, well that contract is worth at least $5 per share. On the other hand, if the contract is for buying Datacorp stock at $9 per share, well the contract is worth much less since the strike price is much closer to the price of the underlying stock. And as the gap between the strike price and the price of the underlying stock changes, so does the value of the call option. When the gap gets smaller, the value of the option drops. When the gap gets bigger, the value of the option increases. Now, the other half of the price of an option is the time left to execute it. The longer the time period, the more the option is worth. If the time frame of a call option is a week, that makes the option worth less than if the time frame of the call option were, say, a year. After all, in a year, the price might go up a lot, but in a week, most of the time, nothing really happens. So I would need to pay a lot more for the option to buy Datacorp at $10 per share if the contract lasted a year than if it lasted just a week or so. So those are the two main ingredients of an option's value, the strike price relative to the price of an underlying stock, and how much time is left in the contract. Fifth, and finally, when you buy an option, it has a price associated with it, but that price is misleading. If an option is said to cost $5 to buy, it actually costs $500 to buy, because options are almost always for 100 shares at a time, and the $5 only represents the price per share, not the price per 100 shares. Okay, 
We now know everything we need to know to properly compare stocks to options. But before we do that, if you could take a moment to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out, I'd really appreciate it. With that said, let's look at this terrible chart and see what it says. This chart is plotting out the profit or loss when comparing buying stocks to buying call options. Specifically, it's comparing either buying a call option or buying the comparable amount of shares of the underlying stock, typically 100 shares. Let's make this concrete and pretend that Datacorp stock is currently trading at $10 per share. If we bought 100 shares of Datacorp, that would cost us $1,000, and as the underlying price changes, that's the horizontal axis here, the value of our investment changes too. If the price goes up to $20, we've doubled our investment. If it goes down to $5, we've lost 500 bucks. And critically, if the price doesn't change at all and stays at $10 per share, our profit is $0. We haven't made any money, but we also haven't lost any either. Fine, that's easy. For options, it's a bit tricky. Let's say that the option to buy Datacorp at $10 per share for the next 60 days costs $2, which, if you remember, is actually $200 since the options are for 100 shares at a time. So now if the stock price stays at $10 per share, we've actually lost the $200 we just spent to buy the option. This is compared to buying the stock itself, where if the price doesn't change, we haven't lost a penny. And this is where things get even more different. As the price of the stock goes down, we don't actually lose any more money. The nice thing about call options is that you never lose more than you invest. If the options cost you $200, that is the most you will ever lose. But as the price of the stock goes up, so does the value of the option. Once you hit $12 per share, that's when you break even. The option costs you $200 to buy, and if you executed, you would buy 100 shares at $10 and then have the ability to immediately sell them for $12 each or $200 in total. So you pay $200 to make $200, leaving you with $0 in profit. But as the price of the stock continues to climb, you make more and more money. If the price goes up to $20, you make $800, since you can now buy 100 shares at $10, but immediately sell them for $20, netting you 1000 bucks. But you did spend $200 to buy that call option, so your profit is $1,000 minus $200, or $800 in total. Okay, all of this is true, and the same story you can probably get from 100 sources, but the story is incredibly misleading. It's misleading because it's comparing spending $200 to $1,000 to make an investment. The reason that these two lines here are parallel is because I'm equating the number of shares in play, 100 shares purchased versus one option to buy 100 shares. But what investor is actually sitting there and saying, well, I can spend either $200 or $1,000, those feel like the same thing. That's nuts. No one thinks that way. Investors, especially retail investors like me and you, have some amount of money they want to invest, and they make a choice based on that. So to make a fair comparison between stocks and options, we shouldn't equate the number of shares in play, like this chart, and every single source I've seen on this matter does, but we should rather equate the amount of money one has to invest. So let's do that for an investment of $200. The nice thing when we do this is that the line for the options doesn't change at all, but what changes dramatically is the line for buying stocks themselves. In particular, the new line looks like this. The way I get this is by figuring out how many shares I could buy with the same $200 it would cost to buy a single call option. Well, at $10 per share, I can buy 20 shares. So now the two lines are definitely not parallel anymore, and that really changes things in how we compare stocks to options. Let's see all of the differences. First, your maximum downside risk is now the same regardless of what you choose to buy. If you buy a call option for $200, that's all you can lose. Well, if you buy $200 worth of stock, that's also the most you can lose. But things do change dramatically on the upside. If, like in the previous example, you buy this call option for $200, and the underlying stock price goes up to $20, you make $800. But if you buy $200 worth of stock and the price goes up to $20, you actually only make $200. In other words, the rate at which profit increases with the call option is much faster than for the purchase of underlying stock. To make $1,000 by buying $200 in stock, the stock price would have to go up $50 a share. So then why doesn't everyone just buy options? If the upside is huge and the maximum downside is the same, why would you ever buy stocks? Three big reasons. The first is that for stocks, they do retain some value as the price goes down. Until the stock price goes to $0, those stocks still have some value and you could sell them. You'd take a loss, but you wouldn't lose everything you invested. That's not true for options. The moment a stock price is below the strike price, 
the value of the option is typically close to zero. Second, the moment you buy a call option, you lose money just by having to spend money to buy. For a call option to have any value to you, the underlying stock price has to go up. If it doesn't, you've spent money for nothing. With a stock, if the price doesn't change, you really haven't lost anything at all. Third, and much more important, options don't last forever. If you have a call option that expires in 30 days and the underlying stock price skyrockets on day 31, well, you're out of luck. On the other hand, if you owned the underlying stock, you would still benefit from that price increase. The fact that options are always constrained by time inherently decreases their value compared to stocks. On the other hand, as we see in this chart, if the price of an underlying stock goes up, call options stand to make you a lot of money with limited initial investment. So what's the point of all this? This is like a 15 minute long video about why I hate one stupid chart. Why do this? Well, because this chart is just so misleading that it feels completely worthless. Yet it's what everyone learns and is absurd. It hides how big a return options can have compared to buying stocks. If you casually looked at this chart, you'd probably conclude that options aren't that big a deal compared to stocks. But if you look at this chart, you can see just how gigantic the potential upside for options is. Now, I'm not suggesting you all go out and sell your stocks in favor of options. Far from it. Rather, I want you to understand exactly what you're getting when you buy a call option. You're getting a massive multiplier on your money. For far less than you would need in order to buy the same number of shares, you can reap a lot of upside, at least if the underlying stock price changes in a relatively short time window. Options, like any investment, have risks, but they also have the potential for huge rewards. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of both of these. Finally, as always, thanks so much for watching.